What's up, everybody? Today, we will take a look at some deconstructed but but very real life and practical and typical code that comes from the Laracast codebase itself. And specifically, what I want to review is how often the most important refactors you'll do, meaning meaning the ones that give you the most bang for your buck, also often happen to be the little refactors, not big things, just the tiny little refactors end up adding into a massive change. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So I will open my editor for the Laracast code base, and yeah, we're only going to focus on a single method within an account controller that I have. And that method is redirect with overlay. So let's scroll up. Yeah, as you can imagine, when a user creates an account with Laracast, well, we probably create a new record in the database, right? Create a new user. We probably sign them in. We probably send a welcome email. And then ultimately, we redirect them to the home page or their dashboard. And then we probably display a little welcome message. Welcome aboard, glad to have you, blah, blah, blah. You've seen it a hundred times. So this method is the logic for that redirection and the welcome message. So we're gonna go over this. It's a little confusing. And again, pretty deconstructed for, for the purposes of a uh, screencast. But yeah, if we go to the bottom, sure enough, we are redirecting somewhere and then we display an overlay modal and it looks like we had these attributes here. So the modal says, welcome aboard. We have a, a custom icon and then a button to close it. Okay, so our job is to clean this up because right now it's pretty confusing. It's not the most complex thing in the world, but still I see a lot of duplication here. There's a lot of... Um, indirection, we can, we can clean this up for sure. I'm gonna point my attention here first. So if not is null, get the signed in user and their team ID. So already I'm, I'm having a little trouble or at the very least I'm having to parse what's going on here. Let's do it again. Check for a team ID on this user record. So we're checking, are you part of a team? And if that is not null, well then, yeah, we, we have to do that translation in our head. If not null, well, that would mean, well, if they are on a team. All right, let's do a comment here. If the user is on a team, then it looks like we have a special message. If you're being added to a team as part of this new account, then we say, okay, welcome aboard. You may now start learning with the rest of your group. Otherwise, we have a default message. Welcome aboard. You're now on our free guest plan. Okay, fair enough. But then right down here, I see the exact same check again. So already a little bit of duplication. Let's copy our comment again and paste it in. All right, so once again, if the user is on a team, it looks like we redirect somewhere, but if they're not on a team, we redirect somewhere else. Okay, maybe there's a reason for that. In this case, the reason is because if you're on a team, you're all set. But if you're not on a team, well, we want to encourage you to upgrade to a paying subscription. So this is where we do that. And then it looks like we also have a query string here. Do we need that? And here's what's funny. Often, you don't know the answer to that question. Maybe it's being referenced somewhere in the JavaScript, or maybe this is legacy code from five years ago that you didn't write, but you don't quite know if it's still necessary. Can we delete this? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to screw anything up, so let's just leave it. These are the situations we often find ourselves in. But yeah, nonetheless, it looks like based on whether you're added to a team, we adjust a redirect URL and the query string. And then it looks like we also check to see if you had a coupon at the time. And if that's the case, we want to include that in the query string when we invite you to upgrade to a paying subscription. Okay. And then we prepare a overlay modal and we redirect. Okay, so there's enough going on here, and yet it's still simple enough that we can pretty quickly grasp what's going on. So our job is to refactor this. And again, I wanna focus on nothing huge. I wanna focus on little things. I want to remove redundant parameters. I want to uh, condense some of these conditionals. I want to extract a variable. Little things will make a huge difference. Why don't we begin with the duplication right here and here? And yeah, notice how we added a comment only because it took just an extra two or three seconds to parse in our head what we were checking for. So in these situations, uh, often, instead of adding a comment, see if you could extract a method or even a variable. So let's do that now. I'm using PHP Storm so I can extract a variable. 
and it's asking me, do I want to replace this one alone or both? Let's do both. Okay, and why don't we call it uh, is on a team. Okay, so now we've removed the duplication, which is a good thing. But even better, notice how now the comment is entirely uh, redundant or, or superfluous. No, note, if the user is on a team, and then the code says, if is on a team. Notice we don't need it anymore. And that was the entire point of that refactor. Okay, again, we're just looking for small wins. Whenever I approach a, a big refactor, I don't think in terms of big. I think in terms of little wins. Small refactors end up adding to, again, uh, giant or massive differences to the code. All right, let's continue on. What's the next small win we could make? Well, how about this right here? My editor is already helping me. We're saying, give me any coupon parameter in the query string, but if you couldn't find one, just set this to null. But null is already the default, as we see here. So I can safely remove this, and the code will still work. OK, again, just a small refactor. Next, uh, why don't we put this on its own line? And then I can see we are redirecting with an overlay where we reference these attributes that are defined here. But notice this is only being referenced right there. You know, So I, I don't see a huge win uh, from extracting the variable. So, so notice sometimes the answer is extract a variable. But other times, the answer or, or the best option is to inline the variable, to do the opposite. And let's do that now. Again, with PHPStorm, I believe I can press Command Option N to do it automatically. And there we go. So notice it removed the variable and it inlined it uh, as an array here. OK, small wins. What else can I do here to improve things? Um, right here, I mean, it's fine. But notice I'm checking if the user is on a team. And then we do the exact same thing. So we're kind of duplicating the conditionals here. That's something we want to file away. But yeah, one thing at a time. Uh, I could do an if else here, but but often when I'm just setting the value of a variable like this, I have no problem using the ternary. So let's see, can I do this automatically? Hmm. I bet there is a way in PHPStorm to automate this, but I, I, I don't remember how. So let's just do it manually. Message equals, is the user on a team? In that case, we're going to select this here. Otherwise, we're going to use the default found here. All right. OK. So yeah, you know what? This is kind of a stylistic choice. Uh, sometimes I would prefer the if else, but other times I think it looks a little more readable if I use a ternary, especially for simple little assignments like this. And I do think that looks better than what we had before. OK. So now I know when I redirect, we, we cache whether or not the user is on a team. Fine. Um, and you know what? It would even be nice if we just had a method on the user model like is on a team or something like that, or uh, on team. And that way, I don't have to manually inspect uh, columns within the user's table. You know what I mean? But we'll come back to that. Next, we create a message variable. And then once again, well, if the user is on a team, then we should redirect here. Otherwise, we should redirect there. So again, hmm, why don't we just extract some of this out? So we have one thing called redirect URL, and we're going to check if you're on a team, you go to the home page. Otherwise, you go to this subscription page. OK, so I can get rid of that and that. And then I have another one for query string here. OK, so notice we're kind of manually building up a query string, uh, which Again, we should leverage PHP a little more here, but we'll come back to that in just a couple minutes. Query string. And it looks like, hmm, if you are on a team, we're going to start by making it an empty string. Otherwise, we will do uh, what we had here. So again, there's a better way to do this, but we're going to do it, or we will approach it incrementally. OK, so now I can see I'm building up two variables. And then right here, hmm. Yeah, well, you know what? Maybe we need another conditional. So if not is on a team, then I can paste in that logic for adding the coupon code. Yeah, so notice I will often perform little refactors that I know I'm not going to keep. Like I already know this is not what I'm going to end up with. But but many times I will still do it because I'm a big fan of, of following the, the process, making little tweaks. So I'm, I'm not trying to make a gigantic refactor all at once. I'm doing it incrementally, sort of like a sort of like a TDD cycle where you're focused more on 
uh, the smallest change you could make that would bring the test to green. Sometimes I think the same thing for refactoring. So I can get rid of that. All right. So notice uh, we've, we've only made small changes, but I've reduced the indentation. And often that, that is a clear sign that you have improved the readability of your code. If you can take something that was indented you know, with two or three tabs and you bring that down to none or one, uh, that's a big improvement. Okay, so with that thinking in mind, I could also combine this up here. Okay, and now I can remove that additional uh, layer of indentation. Okay, but next, yeah, like I said, we could manually build up the query string, but PHP can help us with this. I'll show you how. We'll do it, how about right down here? Yeah, so PHP offers a function called HTTP build query. Let's have a look real quick at the signature. Um, no, 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 where are we? Generate a URL encoded query string. Yeah, this is exactly what we need. Let me show you. HTTP build query. And we could say foo is bar, buzz is biz or whatever. And notice it will automatically uh, create that query string for us. So there's no reason why we need to do it ourselves. Let's go back. All right, so let's give this a shot and we'll do it right up here. Our new query string is an array. And yeah, notice that the only ones we add uh, are potentially registered and coupon. Yeah, so it could look like this and it could look like coupon code is a uh, coupon up here and we could store that coupon equals request coupon yeah it's possible this is what we want but i only want to set the registered uh, item in the query string if the user is not on a team so why don't we say uh, i'll show you a little trick if the user is on a team we could set this to null otherwise we could set it to true or one so here's a cool thing about HTTP build query. If you set a value to null, it will not be included uh, when it builds up that query string. If it's set to false, it will, because that would be equal to zero. So maybe you want to say, you know, um, order by last name zero. You might want that in some cases. But if it's instead set to null, it will be excluded entirely, which is kind of cool. All right, so that takes care of this one right here. Okay, so next, adding the coupon. So it looks like if we have one in the request, we basically want to pass that on here. And it looks like we check if they're not on a team, but I bet, uh, and I'm pretty sure, it doesn't make a difference either way, because if you're being added to a team, you will never have a coupon code in the first place. Okay, so that means I could get rid of this entirely and instead just say request coupon. And again, if there's not a coupon code, that will be set to null. And as we just learned, if it is set to null, coupon will not be included as part of the query string. So yeah, notice how we were able to consolidate this a good bit. But now my editor is squawking because of course we're referencing an array when I instead need to wrap that in a call to HTTP build query. Cool. All right, so now if we scroll up, I can get rid of this and let's do another pass. All right, is on a team. Then we build up a message. Then we build up our query string. Maybe the redirect URL should come before the query string. And then um, we redirect. Okay, this is looking fairly good. Yeah, oh, and I need to add the question mark to begin the query string. Okay, and let's see. Would another format a sprintf? Mm, I don't usually like the way that looks. Usually I prefer concatenation, so we will keep it like that. Okay. So the only remaining thing is, yeah, right here, I'm determining whether or not the user is on a team by checking basically a database column. Look in the user's table, look at team ID, and if it's null, they're not on a team. If it's not null, then they are on a team. But yeah, if auth user returns to me a user instance, I should just have a method like on a team. And in fact, as it turns out, I do. So notice if I were to rewrite this is on a team, equals auth user is on a team. Doesn't it just read so much better than saying if not is null? So much better. And now I can get rid of that entirely. And yeah, that's an improvement. Okay, so let's wrap up with two final things that will really bring this all together. First up, let's review the variable names. Is on a team 
I think it's fine, but really we're checking if you have been invited to a team. So why don't we rename this to invited to team? Just a small change. Next, redirect URL, and then we say return a redirect to the redirect URL. I think I can probably get away with simply calling it URL. All right, finally, same thing with query string. If I change it to query, it's still crystal clear uh, what we are referring to there. So yeah, whenever I can, if there's an option to remove those compound words, I will do that. But if it reduces readability like it might here, like I could change this to invited uh, or something like that, but no, invited to team makes better sense to me. Okay, so the only remaining step is to take one last look at how we declare the URL and the query string. Right now, we are defining them separately, and that's why we're having to reach for a ternary two times. But let's think about the pathway. If you're being invited to a team, notice that there's never gonna be a coupon, and we set that to null. So if you're invited to a team, there's never anything in the query string. Hmm, that's interesting. So that means this query string here is only relevant to that endpoint. Okay, well, if that's the case, check this out. Let's bring this below. And let's instead say, okay, let's append the encoded query right here because this is the only place it's relevant, meaning for this endpoint. Okay, so if we do that, then right down here, all of this can return to a simple URL variable like so, which I like. Okay, so next, right up here, we no longer need this ternary because it's irrelevant if you have been invited to a team. So I can return that to true. And we've removed another uh, pathway, but we're not done. Now I could inline this query entirely because it's only being referenced in one place. So I will do that now. And this is what we get. All right, and then finally, I know I've said finally a few times, but we can wrap up by asking ourselves if we even need this variable anymore. It looks like it's only being referenced in two places. And remember, this isn't some costly operation or we're not accessing a database or anything like that. So really, it's, it's not a performance thing. Maybe if it makes you feel better to cache it, uh, you can, but why don't we try inlining it? So yes, we do end up with two calls, but we also remove the variable. So it's, it's a bit of a wash, but often I find uh, if I can get rid of that variable, it just feels a little bit uh, cleaner to me. And this is what we finally end up with. We have one ternary to figure out what is our message. And then we have another ternary to figure out where are we sending the user? And then we redirect them there. So yeah, I think this ends up being significantly cleaner and easier to understand versus what we had earlier, where for some reason we were building up the query string and the redirect URL independently. There was no need for that. What we have here uh, makes a lot more sense. Okay, that'll do it. So once again, small refactors often add up to big improvements.